Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the webinar series. My name is Sarah Platt with the Maine Department of Education Child Nutrition Program, and our topic for this month's webinar is the National School Lunch After School Snack Program. A quick reminder, this webinar is being recorded and it will be available on our website in the near future. And if you have any questions throughout the webinar, please enter those in the Q&A. Um, you'll see it, I believe, in the box at the top of your screen. We're going to go ahead and get started. So what is the After School Snack Program? It is a component of the National School Lunch Program, and it provides snacks to school-age students that are enrolled in an organized child care service after the school day has ended. Eligible after-school programs must be operated by a school district that participates in the National School Lunch Program. The after-school program must be open to all students, meaning there are no tryouts, exclusivity, or participant selection to be part of that after-school care program. It also must provide regularly scheduled educational or enrichment activities in a supervised environment and only operate on school days after the school day has ended. Program requirements for the after school snack program. The snacks must be eaten on site, so students are not allowed to take them with them. Snacks are offered as a unit. Only one snack per day can be claimed per student. Um, that's an actual count, not attendance count and they must be offered and counted at the point of service. So that's the point at which the student receives a complete snack. That's when it's counted for reimbursement. And of course, the snack must comply with the meal pattern to be eligible for reimbursement. Program responsibilities um, for staff that operate and, and work at the after school, snack, after school program, um, they may be responsible for distributing the snacks to students in the program overseeing that process and taking an accurate count of reimbursable snacks served. They are responsible for maintaining food safety standards and following any instructions that are set by the school food authority to make sure the program is operated properly. They may also be required to submit the required documentation to the school food authority, the SFA, and that would include uh, meal counts and any leftovers. So because program staff have some requirements, training, um, appropriate training is required. They do need proper training on how to identify a re reimbursable snack, how to record reimbursable snack counts, how you want them to handle leftover snacks, and of course, food safety. They also need training on what the procedures are for picking up and returning snacks and submitting paperwork to you. And as with all of our programs and anyone who um, works in our program at all, the civil rights training is required annually. Program eligibility and reimbursement. So if a site or a school has 50% or more free and reduced students enrolled, they are considered site eligible. Site eligible means that snacks can be served to all students at no charge. When you go to file your claim, they are entered in the free category for the after school snack claim. If a site is less than 50% free and reduced, they can still participate in the after school snack program, but they're considered not site eligible. This means that you can charge for snacks served to a paid student and a reduced eligible student. Um, they can be at no charge, but you also can charge if you choose to. And snack counts are claimed. They're recorded and claimed based on student eligibility. So they need to be recorded by student name and eligibility. The meal pattern for the after school snack program, um, a reimbursable snack must include two of the four components in the minimum serving size. So the meal pattern um, has four components. And the reason why they're four and not five is because the vegetable and fruit component is considered one in the after school snack program. So a little bit different than we see in the national school lunch program. So a milk component, the minimum serving size is eight ounces. A fruit and vegetable component, minimum serving size is three quarters of a cup. 
The minimum serving size for the grain component is a one ounce equivalent, and the minimum serving size for a meat meat alternate component is one ounce equivalent. So again, a reimbursable snack must contain two of the four components, two different components from these four listed here. Did you know that vegetables and fruit are the same component in the after-school snacks program? We just mentioned that on the previous slide, but I wanted to repeat it because it is a little different from the other programs you may be participating in. A liquid snack is not allowed, so that means you cannot serve juice and milk as a reimbursable snack. There is no offer versus serve in the after-school snack program. The student must take the two different components for it to be counted as a reimbursable snack. And um, the two different components must be in the full serving size. So remember that serving size for fruits and vegetables was three quarter cup. Here's a quick quiz. Do you think that this is a reimbursable snack? We have a half cup of carrot sticks and a half cup of applesauce. And the answer is no. Remember fruit and vegetable are one component. So we are only offering one component here. Uh, we are offering one cup of fruit and vegetable. So this is not reimbursable because two components must be offered in the minimum serving sizes to be considered a reimbursable snack. What about this snack? We have one ounce of crackers and a half cup of applesauce. Is this a reimbursable snack? And again, the answer is no, and it's because we are not offering enough fruit and vegetable. Again, the required minimum fruit and vegetable component is three quarter cup, and the applesauce here is a half a cup. And here we have one ounce equivalent of crackers. Oh, I'm sorry, I have a typo on my slide. It should say eight ounces of milk, not half a cup of applesauce. So this reimbursable snack, again, one ounce equivalent crackers and eight ounces of milk, is this considered a reimbursable snack? And the answer is yes. We have two different components. They're in at least the minimum serving sizes. Therefore, this snack that's being offered is considered reimbursable. Production records, um, as with our uh, other programs, production records are documentation that the meal pattern um, for the snack that's being offered was met. So they must be kept for the after-school snack program in addition to school breakfast and national school lunch program. They need to contain the name of the site, site where the snack is being offered. They need to document the different components that are offered in the serving sizes that, are, uh, that they are offered in. They need to record the number of servings that were produced served and leftover, meaning returned back to the kitchen. So just like your production records for other programs. With the after-school snack program, you are required to do site reviews. So regular monitoring is required of the after-school snack program. At least two on-site reviews must be done for each site that operates the after-school snack program. The first program review must occur within the first four weeks of operation, and the second review can occur anytime during the same school year. During that review, what you're looking for is um, compliance with meal pattern and also counting and claiming requirements. So making sure those meals are being claimed um, at the point of service. There is a sample review form on our website under um, the After School Snack Program um, that you're welcome to use. And that wraps up um, the requirements for the National School Lunch Program After School Snack Program. And we are able to take any questions if there are any. We have one. Okay. If we give them several choices of fruit and veggies, can they choose what they take as long as it equals three quarters in addition to any, to, in addition to another component? So if they, multiple fruits and veggies, as long as it equals three quarters of a cup. As long as the student is selecting at least three quarters of a cup fruit and vegetable, and then they have a second different component in the minimum serving size, that is considered a reimbursable snack. What you have to be careful of there is just making sure that program staff are well-trained um, to make sure the student has the three quarter cup, they know what that looks like, and that students are well aware that they have to have the three quarter cup. So what I see in that situation sometimes is that it just creates confusion. They think they have to just take two items um, when really that three quarter cup is required. But yes, that, that is allowable.
And seeing that we don't have any more questions, that concludes our webinar for today. Um, thank you for your time and attention, and I hope you have a great afternoon.